In this video, we're gonna go through a pales rail setup for shoulder internal rotation or what's commonly seen as the shoulder sleeper position. Now this is a great movement for opening up workspace in the joint capsule when we see someone is lacking range of motion in shoulder internal rotation or they're experiencing any sort of closing angle joint pain in certain positions with the shoulder. So what we would see in a sense is if we see anyone who lacks range of motion in say shoulder flexion, shoulder extension, abduction, adduction, they might be experiencing some closing angle joint pain. And the way to think of that is the capsule of the shoulder is quite restricted, not allowing movement. And the only way we're gonna see a reduction in that closing angle joint pain is by assessing or addressing the limitations within shoulder internal rotation. So if you've got yourself into a position like so, you've gone down to see how far you can go, your range of motion is either quite limited, or say for example, your scapula has just risen and raised, almost like you're cheating and not moving independently with the shoulder, then this would be a great position for you to try. The actual setup for the position is pretty easy. All we're gonna need here is a block of some sort to support the head. I just lay down on my side and rest my head on that block or cushion, whatever it may be. Now my feet, what I'm gonna try and do here is I'm gonna keep my knees together and I'm gonna keep them facing forward because it's gonna allow me to keep my weight sort of over the shoulder rather than falling back, which is something that we don't wanna see. In terms of setup from here, what I like to do is I like to take the hand, as long as I am sort of comfortable with my head position with the cushion, I take my hand and I place it on the ground here and I push up to sort of take my body weight off the shoulder for a second. Because one thing that we see commonly in terms of setup on this where people that people get wrong is they allow their shoulder blade the shoulder blade sitting at the back of the ribs to sort of shrug up and by doing so they might get into position they go down and they're sitting here and they're going I'm not really feeling much of a stretch here I'm not really getting any stretch sensation on the capsule of the shoulder what we want to make sure is that that shoulder blade at the back of the rib cage has actually kind of set down into position. And a way to help us do so is to kind of push our hand into the floor, get our body weight off the ground for just a second, and sort of focus on feeling a little bit of a pinch down and back with that shoulder blade. You're kind of setting it snugly into position, and you're getting that elbow then in line with it. You should feel a bit of a gap between the shoulder and ear. And when you go down to sort of rest your head, you're certainly not resting excessively on the shoulder. You shouldn't feel any sort of compression up here near the neck and near the ear. Okay, so perfect. Um, it's a really important point to make before we get ourselves set up then. Uh, from here, what we'll try to do is we'll try to assess and see where our active range of motion is. And because we're kind of uh, shortened on this front side, we might get to a point where we just can't go any further we're not necessarily feeling a stretch just yet, but we'll grab our hand and we'll place it on top of what would be sort of our wrist, not necessarily our hand because we're, we don't wanna just stretch out the hand. We wanna make sure that we stretch out that uh, capsule of the shoulder and a way to do so will then be sort of putting some pressure down on the forearm. And as you do that, what you should notice is you're getting a, a stretch sensation kind of going in from say delt all the way into deep within the shoulder joint. And that's kind of how we should be feeling. We should be feeling that stretch kind of back here. I know you might not be able to see with the camera view, but I'm kind of pointing way in right at the acromioclavicular joint. So that area of kind of delt into the shoulder. We'll actually do a little bit of a setup here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set our timer for two minutes. This is sort of our typical time that we wanna focus on our passive stretch for. Remember in a sense, we're getting that passive stretch in initially to sort of get some, like the way you wanna think of it is you're trying to bypass that stretch reflex in the joint the kind of feedback that you're getting from um, the, the area of the shoulder capsule. Your nervous system is initially saying, hey, wait a second, don't go any further. But by holding this sort of two minute stretch, by focusing on your breathing, you're gonna end up bypassing that uh, stretch reflex and we're gonna really get deep into what will be a new end range position for us. So for the moment, let's focus on our breathing. You're gonna go deep in through the nose. Fill all the way into your diaphragm. So feel your diaphragm pushing down into your stomach, expanding in a 360 degree fashion and exhaling and relaxing. So a few common things that we might see with this that go wrong is as we push that, put that pressure on the hand, we start to see the head of the shoulder kind of start to raise up. And that's essentially what would be like the top of the shoulder, that sort of humeral head, that would be sort of raising up um, when we don't really want it to. So we wanna keep it down in some degree. So I'm not squeezing excessively with what would be like my lower trap and my rhomboid, but I'm keeping it engaged to some degree to make sure that that shoulder blade doesn't start to come forward over my shoulder 
and sort of defeat the purpose of the stretch. It'll, it'll sort of interrupt us in terms of getting that stretch sensation. Another thing as well is we don't want to fall back with the shoulders. We don't want to open up. Goes back to my reasoning for what we were doing here with the legs. We're trying to keep our shoulders facing forward, compressing this front side, which allows me to get more of a stretch sensation on the back side, okay? Now, we're gonna go through our pales rail set. Remember, they're isometric contractions in two different directions. We're gonna inhale first, and we're gonna pack some air in our lower abdomen. We're gonna start ramping up tension. Imagine squeezing all of the musculature of the body, getting really tense and stiff. Only when you have that are you now gonna start pushing that bottom hand into the top hand. Every second that goes by, add a little bit more pressure. So 10%, 20%, 30%, gradually building all the way up to what's considered a greatest, safest max effort. And you're holding it, you're not overpowering your right hand. So if you're doing this with your left arm on the bottom, your right hand is actually stopping the left arm from overpowering it. You're feeling all of that muscle that was just getting a stretch, now driving. Now you go in the opposite direction, rails contraction. Imagine keeping your right hand where it is and try to actively drive your bottom hand towards the floor. It might move, you might actually peel off it a little bit, but concentrate and make sure it's actually coming from the shoulder. It's not just the scapula raising up, nothing has fallen out of position. Place your hand back on that top hand, give me a big exhale, let all the tension go. So you were just really ramped up, you were radiating tension throughout the entire body, you were super um, stiff and tight with that. Now you're just passively pushing that arm down, you're still in some way putting some weight into the hand so that you're still getting a stretch sensation. And right now you should feel almost like you've just got an extra one or two degrees out of that position. Nothing major, but it feels a little bit sort of um, freer to some degree. You're still focusing on that breath, we're, and we're gonna go for another round of pales, rails, contractions. 30 seconds for our pales, 20 seconds for our rails. So let's inhale, pack that air into the lower abdomen, irradiate tension throughout the entire body, maximum levels contraction with the rest of the body. Now start gradually increasing with that left arm. You're driving that left arm into the right hand, that top hand. So keep driving tension. Imagining if I take my hand away here, what would happen is my arm would go in this direction. It would rotate externally. So it's in its most internally rotated position, but the pales contraction of feeling all of that muscle that's just getting a stretch start to push into that top hand. Rails contraction, three, two, one, drive in the opposite direction. Initiate shoulder internal rotation. And as I said, we're feeling rotation of the arm. We're driving that fist down towards the floor, actively trying to achieve as much range of motion as possible. Feel all that tissue on the front side start to shorten and contract. Place the hand back on, give me a big exhale again. And let's just try to hang out here for about 45 seconds. The idea being that we've heightened our nervous system, we've heightened the awareness around the, um, around the shoulder. We wanna both equally get good at relaxing in this position as well. So it's, it's equally advantageous to us to gain strength, but we also need to be able to breathe, to be able to control our nervous system in some capacity when we work on our pales, rails, contractions. So these moments here where you're catching your breath, you're focusing on your inhale for about three to four seconds, and then you're trying to exhale for about six to eight. And what you might find is literally your body turns to jello and you don't hold on to as much stretch when you focus on the breath like that. Come out of the position slowly, you can just take that top hand off, you can let your hand come up, support yourself in whatever way, getting up out of the position, but that should have felt perfect, those two contractions on top of the passive stretch. You should now feel as if the muscles um, and tissue going into the shoulder capsule feel as if they've worked in some way. So a really great position, as I said, if you need to work on shoulder internal rotation or you have some issues with the shoulder capsule. If you have any questions or anything like that, be sure to let me know in the comment section. If you liked that video and you felt you got a lot from it, then please leave a like on it. And if you want to get some more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the page and I'll see you on the next video.